Hi. Winter is coming, so we need something to keep us warm. And toasting chips is one way to do it. And that's what I'm going to try and do today anyway. So today's going to be about getting set up to maybe try a little bit of overclocking, gentle overclocking with some retro chips. So we'll see how that goes. And the machine we're going to do it on is this one. I did a video of this a little while ago. Some of you may have seen it. It's a uh, a socket A build I did and at the time I only had a Duron so it's got a Duron 1300 in it and I always wanted an Athlon machine like I had back in the day so I put an Athlon sticker on it with the intention of upgrading it to an Athlon at some point in the future and that point is now so I'm going to compare the Duron to the Athlon in its vanilla form and because I overclocked that Thunderbird back in the day I think it was a 850 and I overclocked it to a gigahertz and that was the first time I ever gone beyond the one gig mark and it's about I can't remember exactly what date maybe 2001 2002 so I'm going to try and overclock these a little bit I don't know whether my motherboards are up to it or not but that's what we're going to take a look at and at least get set up to give that a go so the motherboard needs to be changed on this thing because I think I had a look at this in that first video and there's just nothing you can do in this BIOS. It has no overclocking potential whatsoever and doesn't give you access to anything. So I'm going to have a little look through my boards and see if I've got anything that at least let me tweak a couple of the, the parameters that we need to get the process to work a bit faster. Get the old motherboard out and the cards to make some space for something else. And yeah, I forgot what was in here. It's one of those Elite Group K7S5A Pro boards. They're really cool looking purple ones. Though I think these were really budget boards. I actually had one of these in a video a couple of videos ago that I got in some kind of random mystery machine that unfortunately didn't work. But here there's a working one, so that's cool. Now these boards don't do any overclocking with the officially supported BIOS. I did have a bit of a Google and there was a third party, a sort of unofficial BIOS called the Honey X BIOS, cool name, and that would allow you to change the front side bus speed. So you could do a bit of overclocking with them by loading up this third party BIOS. I doubt I could find it and I'm not going to go there anyway. So we'll see what other boards we can find. So I just kind of stuck my hand in my cupboard and I've got four socket A boards, I think. Two of them don't seem to work, but these two do. So they're both ASRock boards. Might say something about how reliable their stuff is. Uh, one of them runs off a VIA chipset and the other one's got an SIS chipset. And one's a slightly older one because it still supports SD RAM, I think. And uh, I think I'm going to go with the bigger board. It has more potential for expansion and such things. Uh, I think the SIS chipset on here is generally reasonably highly regarded. And this one just has, it has room for more DDR RAM and so on. So I'll go with the big board and we'll see if that has any overclocking potential. So this motherboard is uh, ASRock K7. S8X. It's probably a bit overkill for what we're doing here um, with an early Socket A build. You know, Socket A and Socket 462 went on for ages. This board's capable of dealing with an Athlon XP 3000 Plus and uh, we're putting a 1300 megahertz Thunderbird or Morgan on it. So anyway, it'll do the job. So hopefully it'll have some decent overclocking features too. So it's just a case of building the machine back up and Memory wise, I've just grabbed a stick of, it's PC3200, but I don't, I'm not really bothered if it's overkill for this. I'm just going to put 512 megabytes in there because it's a Windows 98 machine and that's all that Windows 98 can deal with, I believe. And it's just going to be a case to get that motherboard in there and then decide what processor we'll deal with first. I wanted to compare two like for like, so we've got an Athlon Thunderbird 1300 and we've got a uh, Duron with a Morgan core also running at 1300 so essentially the Duron is the budget version of this Athlon so they're a nice pair to compare. The Duron was regarded as a budget sort of monster that could easily be overclocked to come close to the much more expensive Thunderbird so we might get to try that out we'll see. Train directly to your office. It'll be here in 20 seconds unless you pick the PC that'll reroute the train in time. Will you choose the PC with Intel Pentium 3 or the one with the new AMD Athlon processor? Many people don't know there's a faster PC processor than Pentium 3 at any clock speed. The new AMD Athlon processor. Now you chose wrong, day. Too bad you didn't know about the new AMD Athlon processor. Oh, that had to hurt, huh? 
I got my Athlon Thunderbird, my first one back in the day, from a company called overclockers.co.uk, who still exists today. They're kind of a, a PC enthusiast retailer now. Was Back then, they were a very specialist overclocking company. And overclocking was a bit of a sort of dark art back then and wasn't so widely known or widely done. So you could go to them and they would provide you with a processor that had already been stress tested and guaranteed to reach a certain speed. And you got a nice sort of personalized set of instructions on how to make your processor get to where you wanted it to go. And my particular one, I think, was an Athlon 850, and they guaranteed that that processor had been tested and would run stable at 1 gigahertz, which is kind of the exciting thing, because it was a big thing to get over 1 gigahertz in those days. So one of the steps that they told you about was a thing called the pencil trick. The pencil trick's sort of fairly, fairly widely known thing for this generation of AMD chips. So there's a bunch of bridges on the surface of the chip and some of them are being cut and the level one bridges on the top of the chip. If you reconnected those, then it would unlock the multiplier and allow you to do stuff with the processor. So the reason why it's called the pencil trick is you just get a pencil and you draw the cut back in with graphite which is a conductor and that restores the connection so we've got our equipment here i've got my little magnifying goggles got a, a very fine propelling pencil and that's exactly what we're going to do to these two chips so it really is just a case of drawing the line with the pencil that bridges the place where the trace was cut and you have to be careful not to cross between one trace and the other that would create a short and it's a fiddly job and it's handy to have these magnifying glasses to do the job with. Uh, the Duron's slightly different. It's If you look at this online you'll tend to get a lot of articles that show you how to do it on the level one traces on the Thunderbird but on the, on the Duron it's slightly different. It has five traces as opposed to four and it also doesn't have any level two traces so the way that it looks is slightly different which can be a bit sort of misleading but I just filled in all five on the Duron so I'm pretty sure that's going to be okay. And then you end up with something that looks a little bit like this and cross your fingers and hope they still work. It's quite interesting how the Duron came to be and this is like this is the roadmap that AMD were publishing at the time so they had the AMD Athlon, which was for high-performance PCs. Then they had this thing called AMD Athlon Select, which was going to be a value version. It was still going to carry the Athlon brand, but they must have thought twice about it. So they, they initially said there was going to be this thing called the Athlon Select for low-end PCs, a sort of Celeron equivalent, but then they decided to call it something totally different, called it the Duron. Not quite sure what happened to the sort of enterprise versions. I'm going to put the Duron in first and give that a go and I looked for the biggest heatsink I could possibly find. Um, I got a few different socket A heatsinks. This one had the biggest cooler so I'm going to go with that. Though I'm not, I'm just going to give it a gentle nudge into the overclock. I don't want to, don't want to do anything to wear the chip out. It's getting old. I don't want it to break. I was looking through the motherboard manual to see how to connect the front panel connectors up and it's just as well I did because there's some jumpers on here that need setting for the front side bus and I was a bit surprised by that and it needs to be set to 200 which really confused me so this is a 1.3 gigahertz processor it said that the multiplier was 13 but then it wants me to set it to 200 megahertz so I'm like well 13 times 200 is 2600 and it should be 1300 and I had to go and do a bit of googling about this because I was a bit sort of frightened of setting it that way and it turns out that this was quite a thing back in the day a lot of motherboard manufacturers would say that it was a 200 megahertz front side bus for these processors where really what they meant was it was a 100 megahertz double data rate front side bus so it was doing a double data rate connection between the processor and the, and the north bridge on the motherboard but they called it 200 for some reason where it still really wasn't it was 100 just sort of working at double data rate so anyway that's off that problem so it's 200 it is even though it really is 100. The original machine had a separate sound card and ethernet card but I don't need those because it's all built into this motherboard so I'm going to give the onboard sound a go it's a C media chip I think so install that and see what it sounds like. It 
doesn't sound too bad at all. I mean, this was a time when I would never have dreamed of using on board sound it had a pretty bad reputation so ac97 was flying around everywhere but i always still had discrete sound cards at this point in time anyway so but that sounds all right booting into the machine just to check that it is indeed showing us it's got the 1300 megahertz 100 times 13 and everything looks cool for the stock duron ah Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot in it. For some reason, I had it in my head that there was more in this BIOS. I don't know whether I was thinking about a different motherboard, but I I was lazy. I didn't check before I did it because I thought <laughs> there was already the settings that we were going to need. But this, all is not lost. There's things in here that we can do. The front side bus is adjustable, so you can at least do something with that. Unfortunately, the multiplier that we went to all the trouble with with the pencil trick, unlocking it, there's not much you can do in here, so I think that's going to be a no-go, at least on this motherboard. And the voltage, there's no settings for the voltage. I was a bit dubious about over-volting old processors like this anyway. There is a way, and that's with the bridges on the front of the chip, similar to what we did on the pencil trick. There is some other bridges, the level 6 bridges, and they can be used to, to adjust the voltages. So could do it but i'm not going to so i'm afraid for this overclock at least until i have a dig through and see if i've got any other motherboards we're going to be stuck with just upping the front side bus going to be a bit gentle to begin with just a tiny little shunt from 100 up to 105 so that should just give us an extra 65 megahertz and we should have 1365 so let's see what happens yeah. who turned the lights out that's what happened. It went black and it didn't come back on. So I wasn't happy with that at all. So I did fiddle about with this quite a lot, which I did off camera. So basically I took the processor out again. Uh, I did a bit of Googling and apparently it's specific to the, the kind of lead in your pencil, whether, you know, some pe some pencils have a sort of higher graphic graphite content and stuff like that. So some pencils aren't as conductive as they could be, which is a bit of a shit. I cleaned the existing pencil off, took the processor out again, gave it a good wipe, and then went and got myself a really high quality artist sketching pencil. So that doesn't have good quality graphite, I just simply don't know what does. So I carefully did it all again, put it all back in, and back into the BIOS we go. So this time, just in case I really pushed it too hard with that 105, I'm going to set it to 103 and we'll reboot and see what happens. There you go, an overclock. So it's 13 times 103 equals 1336. That's not what it says there, but it's an overclock nevertheless, so it's definitely registered an increase in speed of the processor, which is kind of the point. And at least it shows you can do something with that front side bus and not having the multiplier is a bit of a pain. I am going to dig around and see if I can find a motherboard that does this because I want to see if that pencil trick works. If I haven't got one, I will be buying one and looking into that a bit more at some point. But I think I'm going to call it a day for this video because if I went on to do all of the comparisons that I plan to do now it would get to be a very very long video. What I plan to do next is just basically do some benching of the stock Duron versus the stock Athlon and then overclock them as much as I can using this method and then bench them again and see what kind of improvements you could get out of them. So that's going to be it for now and I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you'll join me for the exciting next segment, which I'll do over the next sort of two or three days, get it out maybe by the end of next week. In the meantime, if you did enjoy it, it'd be great if you could do the usual thumbs up, subscribe, thumbs down, leave a message, whatever. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.